Widely considered to be the building blocks of the future, semiconductors power everything we deem convenient in our day-to-day -day lives. But they may also be the catalyst for the next global conflict. The United States and Taiwan currently lead the world in semiconductor production, but the COVID-19 pandemic threw several unforeseen factors into the global semiconductor market. As Chinese-American relations continue to waver, why might semiconductors bring tensions to the ultimate boiling point of war? The country that controls semiconductors controls the world. These tiny chips are the cornerstone of modern technology. They power everything from our phones and laptops to our hair dryers and microwaves. The U.S. accounts for roughly half of the global market share in 2021 and has had a stronghold in the semiconductor industry for nearly three decades. On the other hand, China only accounts for 5% of the market share and isn't considered a significant player outside of the Chinese market. The biggest semiconductor production companies in the world are in the U.S., Taiwan, and South Korea, with Asia dominating the market. Companies prefer to outsource the production of semiconductors simply because of the high fixed cost to manufacture them in-house. These companies can instead focus all their time, money, and energy on research and development on the design of their product instead of the actual manufacturer of the semiconductors. Taiwanese company TSMC dominates with a vast majority of the manufacturing market, making them the largest producer of semiconductors in the world. Coming in a very distant second place is South Korea's Samsung Electronics. In short, China is lagging behind in semiconductor production. If they want to become the global economic leader they aspire to be, they'll have to become semiconductor independent. However, independence is a long way away. According to Bloomberg, in 2020, China spent more money on semiconductors based on Western tech than it spent on oil, roughly $350 billion. China buys up around 60% of the world's chip production, with 90% of those purchases coming from companies outside of China. They're highly dependent on resources of which they control very little of. A simple analogy would be someone living in the U.S. getting 90% of their water from Canada. However, China's efforts aren't futile. Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp, or SMIC, in Shanghai plans to build a new manufacturing facility to become more independent. However, their integrated circuits are based on 28 nanometer technology which is a decade behind TSMC, who will be unveiling three nanometer technology in 2022. Spending billions on a new manufacturing facility may wind up setting China two steps back, as world leaders in semiconductor tech take several steps forward. We can thank semiconductors for the lives we live today. Without them, there would simply be no modern technology, no internet, no smart cars, and no PlayStation 5s. But a semiconductor is much more than just a computer chip. The most well-known semiconductor material is silicon. It's how Silicon Valley got its name when the semiconductor industry began booming there back in the 1950s. Semiconductors fall in a gray area between conductors and insulators, so let's have an extremely quick science lesson. Metal conducts electricity, making it a conductor. Anything that doesn't conduct electricity is an insulator. Conductivity has to do with the passing of electrons between energy bands. In order for a material to conduct electricity, electrons must pass from a lower energy band to a higher one. The distance between this gap is what's called the band gap. For example, metals have no gap, so electrons can freely pass between the bands. Insulators, such as glass and rubber, have a wide gap, so high energy levels need to be applied to the material in order for it to conduct. However, the amount of energy required would destroy the material. And here's where semiconductors are important. Silicon, a common semiconductor, has a small enough band gap that if enough energy is applied, it can conduct without breaking or melting. At room temperature, silicon is an insulator. However, if you heat it up enough, silicon can become a conductor. Therefore, it's called a semiconductor. Transistors are microscopic circuits that power our computers and smartphones. And these transistors are printed on semiconductor wafers. Taiwanese Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, is the most valuable semiconductor company in the world. Because they aren't making their own devices, TSMC can focus on semiconductor research and development. This tech giant became the first Taiwanese company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 1997, and as of November 2021, holds a $639.91 billion market cap. So why does the world's largest semiconductor company hang in the balance between US and China relations? Let's briefly look at the history of the China-Taiwan conflict. After the end of World War II, 
Japan relinquished control of Taiwan to China, a country it had controlled since 1895. Mao Zedong rose to power after a civil war broke out between Mao's Communist Party and then-leader Chiang Kai-shek's Kuomintang Party. Chiang's people fled to Taiwan, where his son would eventually pave the way for democracy. To make an extremely complicated long story short, let's just call the relationship between China and Taiwan complicated. China still claims Taiwan as part of its territory, but on the other hand, Taiwan has been governing itself for decades. The situation could be described as a couple breaking up. Except, one party never wanted to break up and never accepted, and the other party has moved on for years. Taiwan elected their first female president in 2016. And a phone call between Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen and Donald Trump called into question the One China policy set in place since 1979. In short, One China was an agreement reached by President Nixon to only recognize the People's Republic of China as the ruling government of China. To recognize the governing body of Taiwan would assert that the U.S. believed them to be separate entities. Trump recognizing Tsai Ing-wen as Taiwan's president marked the first time a U.S. president has had direct communication with a Taiwanese president since 1979. So, how does this all relate to semiconductors? Let's look at what all three parties want. Taiwan wants independence from mainland China, but lacks the military force capable of defending itself from a Chinese invasion. China wants to absorb Taiwan back into the mainland while also becoming semiconductor independent. Absorbing Taiwan means absorbing the largest semiconductor foundry on the planet. And with their military capabilities, they could most likely do it if they wanted to. However, an invasion of Taiwan would cripple geopolitical ties with every major economy in the world. The United States wants to maintain peace with China, but leans heavily on TSMC for its semiconductors. While open conflict is considered highly unlikely, China's need for semiconductors is eerily similar to Japan's need for oil in World War II. Oil powered everything, and like the semiconductors of today, the country who controlled oil controlled the world. According to Japanese Emperor Hirohito's diary entries, quote, Japan went to war with the United States because of oil, and lost the war because of oil. After studying how oil and the internal combustion engine were the deciding factors in World War I, Japan became entirely dependent on imported oil to power their military machine. At the time, Japan was getting 80% of its oil from the US. While Hitler rose to power in the West, Japan pursued a war against China in the East. The Roosevelt administration, fueled by public outrage, issued embargoes on exports to Japan. Like China's attempts at semiconductor development, Japan established synthetic fuel plants by converting coal into oil. While their lab work was up to par, they tried to cut corners and expedite the process. In doing so, they failed to achieve the large-scale production they needed, thus continued dependency on foreign oil. Seeking to become oil independent, Japan invaded South Vietnam as a stepping stone to counter the East Indies, an oil-rich area. That was the final straw for America, who issued a full-scale oil embargo on Japan. The British and Dutch did the same, leaving Japan with a two- to three-year oil supply and a full-scale Asian conquest on their minds. Japan was left with two choices. Conquer now with everything they had, or submit to Allied powers on oil dependency. Obviously, they chose the former, and the rest is history. There's a reason you can't buy a brand new Tesla or the latest hot gaming console right now. It all has to do with the global chip shortage that's ravaged the world since the start of the COVID pandemic. But COVID isn't the only factor playing into the demand for semiconductors. Here's where sanctions against Chinese companies such as Huawei come into play. It began when Huawei and 114 affiliate companies were placed on an economic blacklist by the US, called the Entity List. Companies on this list are considered national security concerns, and American companies are restricted from exporting certain tech to them, such as semiconductors. Huawei leads the world in 5G technology and smartphone sales. The US, Australia, and several other countries have accused Huawei of cyber espionage in recent years. Intelligence agencies cite obscure language in Chinese law that could force Huawei to hand over secure data to the Chinese government. However, no public evidence of this has been provided. In the wake of these allegations, the Trump administration placed Huawei on the entity list and doubled down with stricter sanctions in August of 2020. 
These sanctions restricted any foreign chip manufacturer using American-made tech or software, such as TSMC, from doing business with Huawei. Manufacturers would need special licenses to do business with Chinese companies. Those licenses most likely involved many complicated fees and stipulations that those companies don't want to deal with. American chipmakers are still vulnerable to the sanctions. According to the Semiconductor Industry Association CEO, chip sales to China fund innovation and research in America, and restricting that trade hinders the progress. As work-from-home orders were put in place, laptop, gaming systems, and other electronic device purchases went through the roof. The supply of semiconductors couldn't keep up with the demand for electronic goods. The scarcity of PlayStation 5s is one such example of the chip shortage's effect on the average consumer. The auto industry has also felt the effect of the chip shortage. Tesla orders are backed up for at least a full year, and car manufacturers worldwide struggle to keep up with the demand for new cars as the chip shortage persists. The pathway to open conflict, although unlikely, is almost as cut and dry as you can get. China wants semiconductors, and they can't make their own. Taiwan controls the vast majority of the most advanced semiconductors. The mirroring of Japan's situation regarding oil during World War II is hard to ignore. The economic and geopolitical fallout from open war with China, to say the least, wouldn't be worth it. In the words of Nobel Peace Prize winner Norman Angel, quote, the economic cost of war was so great that no one could possibly hope to gain by starting a war the consequences of which would be so disastrous. Angel wrote that in his book, The Great Illusion, in 1909, regarding the possibility of open conflict in Europe. And both world wars ravaged Europe for the next 40 years. Click to watch one of these next videos.